Hey guys, welcome back. Got a couple new items that we have to test out here. Uh, the first one here is a Celeron CPU. Let's see if I can focus in here. It's a Celeron D356 socket 775. It's a 3.3 gigahertz Celeron. And we picked up this ASUS motherboard P5 ND2 SLI Deluxe. This is a socket 775 motherboard for uh, Pentium 4s. Pentium D's and Celerons, I believe. And you can see the specs right there. This has an Enforce 4 chipset on it. So let me go ahead and get this thing unboxed. The box is pretty cool. It's got this nice little flap that you can lift up and it tells you all kinds of cool shit. I noticed it says somebody wrote recycle on there, so I'm not sure if the thing even works or not, but we'll find out. The box looks in really good shape. The exterior, anyways. And there's our motherboard. That's one of the ones where you have to you'd have to flip this card around to enable SLI on it. Somebody even kept the protective cover for the socket. And there's nothing else in the box. Alright, so now we've got the motherboard out. We'll get some things socketed onto it and find out if it'll actually work. It appears it's got a slightly bent pin so before I try to put a CPU in there I'm going to take a close look at that with a magnifying glass All right, that was a little bit tedious, but I think I got it. Let's go ahead and get a CPU installed in here. We might as well just go with that Celeron. And then we're just going to slap any old heat sink on it for now. Socket 478 heat sink, but it'll work. Alright, I think we're all set to fire it up, make sure that it's going to actually turn on. Once the power supply is on. Voila. All right, it shuts down before it even enters setup, even with a different CPU. 
All right, so now we got a proper little cooler on it. Let me turn this power supply back on. I think it is on. Yep, it's on. Um, let me go ahead and power this up and see what happens now. go and I think yep I think what it was was I, I think I just needed a uh, heat sink mounted actually mounted on there uh, that would probably just get even that cellar on hot right away so let's see what we got here in bios jumper free It looks like we've got quite a range here of uh, voltage adjustments, so that's cool. Yeah, there's a Pentium D3 gigahertz I threw in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the solar on back in there and make sure that works, and then we'll come back. All right, solar on's back in, and I'm sure it'll work. Alright, and this time it's working. Maybe I had to uh, set up a new CPU in the BIOS, I don't know. Let's see if we actually get into our setup. There we go. Alright, there we go. Still around 3.3 .3 gigahertz. Yeah, so far everything seems to be working. CPU temperature and BIOS says it's 33. Motherboard temperature 30. So, uh... Everything looks good. I think um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this set up in the test bench and we'll get an operating system loaded on it. And uh, we'll see what this little Celeron can do. So to save time, I just ended up swapping an SSD from another system I was testing that has Windows 10 already installed. And it's now all set up for this system. And I added a timer here and sped the video at 400%. So you can see how long it actually took to fully load Windows. I can't even imagine the horror of loading windows with a CPU and a regular old IDE hard drive. The Celeron D has been paired with 4GB of DDR2 and a GTX 260 GPU. A minute and 45 seconds later, Windows starts to welcome us in and finally, 2 minutes and 16 seconds later, we're in Windows 10. Oh, and uh, in case I didn't mention, the Celeron D is currently running at just about 4.7GHz. Now that Windows is loaded, uh, we can check the task manager and see that some of the background Windows tasks really eat the CPU up. So it's best to just wait for them to all finish and settle down before running any more tests. You can see even a task manager takes a chunk of CPU usage, so multitasking is not really a thing on Windows 10 with the Celeron. Before I do anything at all, I'm going to close down any unneeded tasks and launchers. Once the task manager is the highest CPU usage shown, I can then close that out and do what I need to do. Starting out with something simple, uh, let's open up CPU-Z. It opens up pretty quickly, so that's a good sign. And here you can see uh, 1.47 volts V core is what it took to run at 4.7 gigahertz. And you know this the CPU could actually go a lot further, but uh, with the cooler that I have on there, that's about the limit. I can take it right now. There's only four gigs of RAM installed, but with the single core Celeron, uh, I think that's the least of the worries that this PC has. Um, what about getting on the internet? Let's click on Firefox and see how long it takes for us to be able to use it. 
I wasn't counting, but uh, there's a little delay there, but it loaded up the start page with no issues. Scrolling down through it, it does lag a little bit, so you know, a little patience is required. But let's say we wanted to check out YouTube. You can see it definitely loads pretty slow, but it is loading. A uh, little more patience required for scrolling down the page as the thumbnails definitely load slow. So let's see if we can find a video to watch and see how this little guy performs with streaming video. Goats on a dam. Well, that looks pretty interesting. The rock that was used to build this dam contains essential minerals that have been dissolved. So it set the resolution to 480p automatically, and there was definitely some stuttering while the video was loading in, but it seems to have smoothed out. And as much as I doubt it's going to do well, I'm going to try 720p. And they'll scale a dam to get them. And as you can see, that was not a good idea. So back to 480p, and let's see if we can handle full screen. Without these salts and minerals, their bones won't grow. Their nervous systems and muscles can't function. Movement and coordination can falter. I have a lot of fear when I'm in very situations e guardo verso il basso e non sono di certo uno stambecco. There's a strong bond between mother and kid. Yeah, that was not too bad. So I guess YouTube is doable. Wherever she goes. So what about a website with no video, just text and photos? Yeah, it seems to load a little slow, but not too bad. Scrolls fine until it has to load more images or something, but I would say it works well. So far, the Celeron D is doing better than I expected in Windows 10. Alright, so let's say I want to shop on eBay. The main page seems to load okay, and it scrolls just fine. So let's search for something to buy. Perhaps we want to buy an AMC Gremlin. The page loads and images loaded no problem. Clicking the link loaded the next page pretty quickly as well with the images. The images all show when you scroll over them and the zoomed in view works just fine. Page scrolls no problem, so I think this is too easy. Let's try Amazon. Amazon definitely seems a bit slower than eBay, but there are a lot more images to load, and considering how many there are, I mean, I guess it's doing okay. Scrolling down looking for something to buy, uh, ah, let's check out this bedding just because. I think everything loaded aside from these images here. Uh, let's check out the product video.
at Best Reviews, our expert reviewers spend thousands of hours researching, analyzing, and testing products to recommend the best picks for most consumers. We'll present our expert's take on the pros and cons of each product, plus point out our best... Alright, well that was terrible. Uh, if you're on Windows 10 with seller on D, overclocked or not, uh, don't try to watch the Amazon product videos. Okay, let's find a simple program to open and use. Uh, Paint will do. And that seemed pretty instant. No lag while drawing either. Uh, this might be the perfect system for artists like me. If you can't tell, I specialize in portraits. Alright, perfect time to get in a Cinebench R15 run as well. And judging by the speed this is going, I think I'm going to go get some dinner and then I'll come back and wait for this to finish. Alright, dinner was good. I'm stuffed and I see this run is just about over. And there we go. At 4.7 gigahertz, we managed to get a score of 39, getting pretty much eaten up by all other single core CPUs at far less frequency. I did manage to get in a run at 4.8 gigahertz earlier, and uh, that only increased the score to 42. And now I'm thinking maybe we can play some games using the CPU. So let's find out. We'll start off with Fear. And here you can see everything is at the lowest settings possible at 800 by 600 resolution and we'll see how it does in the benchmark. Despite the poor resolution and quality, it didn't look too bad and managed an average FPS of 140, so I may have underestimated this. So let's bump it up to 1024 by 768, set all the settings to high. And we still managed an average FPS of 56. So you could, ideally, you could turn up some settings and have a good time with fear. Far Cry is next, and we'll just jump right into 1080p high settings. Surprisingly, uh, the FPS stays above 30. I really didn't expect that. So what if we turn everything down and we play at 600 by 800?
Well, that was definitely an improvement, and honestly it didn't look too terrible either. I did notice a few graphical glitches while I was playing, like you can see here, but I think that was more Windows 10 related, so I'm not going to hold that against the Celeron. Flat out runs on just about anything, including this overclocked Celeron. As you can see, it maintains 60 FPS the entire time racing, but it does drop when you get thrown through the windshield and ragdoll down the track. Hitman Blood Money, 1080p high settings, it actually seems to do quite well. Uh, I wish I would have tested this at the stock 3.3 GHz, but I, honestly, I didn't expect that it was going to do this well overclocked. I was assuming this was going to be a terrible experience. Serious Sam, the first encounter, 1280 by 1024 high settings, that ran quite well. I ran into some issues when I tried to change to Direct3D, and here you can see the screen just went black. I also had issues with Serious Sam, the second encounter. The game ran fine, as you can see here. At 1280 by 1024, but anytime I try to change any of the settings, it re reset all the settings. And I also blame this on Windows 10 since I've always had problems with these games on the Windows 10. Uh, this one I could have turned the settings down a bit and the FPS would have improved, but it played just fine as it was. So for shits and giggles, I just had to try GTA 5, and as expected, that didn't go very well at all. I expected terrible frame rates, but so many textures just failed to load. You can see here all the missing furniture, windows, cabinets, etc. And stepping outside, it looks even worse. So I finally found an area where more of the textures loaded, but now other issues were popping up. When I pressed F to get into the truck, the dude just froze, even though the rest of the game was still going on, like the dog walking there. And after a while, he just poofed into the truck. There was also about a two second input delay, so at this point I just quit trying. So I also ran the CloudGate benchmark for no reason, other than I had run it with the CPU clocked at the default 3.3 GHz to just test the system. So there's at least one set of results to compare stock to overclocked. And in the end the total score ended up to be 2111 and we can compare it to the 3.3 GHz score that it received for 1534 and you can see that Overclock made a pretty large improvement over all the other scores. Tomb Raider is pretty surprising, it always benchmarks well even on older hardware and I still didn't expect much from a seller on here but uh, it didn't do too bad. Right now it's running at 1080p medium settings, and while the FPS doesn't look impressive, it actually is considering this is a single core Celeron with 512 kilobytes of L2 cache. Average FPS was 23.2. Um, let's see if we can do better by cranking down the settings. So 800 by 600 with the settings as low as we can go, we now get 27.5, so not much difference at all. And last but not least, Crisis. We already know this isn't going to go well, but it's tradition, right?
1920 by 1080 medium settings, it's pretty much a single digit FPS experience. I tried lowering the resolution to 800 by 600, but as you can see, it really makes no difference. So I also lowered all the graphics settings to low, but there still really was no difference other than their reduced graphical quality. And apparently I lied, Crisis wasn't last. I decided to test out Tomb Raider Anniversary as well. And at 1024 by 768 at the highest settings, uh, no problem whatsoever. As expected, the CPU usage is 100% at all times, but the frame rate's excellent. Bumping it up to 1920 by 1080 makes no difference, still an excellent frame rate. But in Tomb Raider and Underworld, you can see the difference a couple years makes. It's having a tough time maintaining 30 FPS in this scene here. Changing the settings to low doesn't change that, but it does give the textures that mid-90s pixelated look. So that seems to be the limit of the CPU even overclocked. In retrospect, I wish I would have tested this in the original stock configuration compared to the overclock. That actually could have been two separate videos, one for Windows 10 performance and one for gaming results. I think I'm going to definitely retest this system again with some games in the future with Windows XP. As far as this video goes, um, I was expecting this Celeron to not be able to handle regular tasks in Windows 10 overclocked. So I didn't really see the point in testing it out in the stock configuration, but it really didn't do too bad. So if you made it this far and you want to see more of the Celeron, let me know. You guys take care, and I will see you on the next one.